our history of the Havasupai people. This is their Aboriginal homeland. This is where we are, our first beginning, our people were. A lot of this land base right here has our ancestors' footsteps, our ancestors being here, living off the land. This whole canyon as a whole is a very sacred, sacred place in our eyes. And we still, the Havasupai exist, and we still watch over it as much as we can. Songs not only give direction, songs not only remember the past, but they remind us of where we're going, of our future of the Zuni people's future, of how we need to carry on with what our ancestors have taught us. With that, our culture and our history will live on forever. For the National Park Service here at Grand Canyon, it's important to have the Park Service's voice be in the background, and for the people whose histories are here to be the ones telling it. Here at Desert View, we're going to have the first person, the indigenous people, the communities, the people whose ancestors lived here, who are still here, tell their histories rather than the Park Service retell and retell and retell. It's that first voice, it's that original voice. That's what we want to be able to do. The Grand Canyon Watchtower was opened in 1932, so it was during the time building up to that, I assume about a year before that my grandfather was working on the murals here uh, in this particular room. I feel like the National Park's recent initiatives to highlight Desert View as a cultural center where people can experience the authenticity of Native cultures, I feel like that's very important. I also feel like those voices should permeate all throughout the canyon, you know, because this is, this is our home. This is the home of our mothers, the home of our fathers. Desert View is one of the most visited areas of Grand Canyon National Park, and we want to transform this place from just the watchtower, which is a beautiful structure that was built by Mary Coulter with influence from tribal members throughout the area and her research that she did of tribal lands around the southwest into a place where visitors can interact with tribal members themselves, learn their stories, see their cultural demonstrations, and hopefully go and visit those tribal lands. In 2013, the National Park Service formed the Intertribal Working Group. It's made up of Park Service staff, tribal members, and as a nonprofit partner of the park, Grand Canyon Conservancy. The important part for non-tribal members was listening, hearing what tribal members not only wanted, but what they needed to create an authentic experience for visitors. So they would tell us what they, what they wanted, what they wanted to see. We, the park would go back, develop plans, come back to the tribes, get input, go back and revise, and come back again. So it's been a very collaborative project. There's been input from both sides. And because of that, this will be a long-term project. This won't be here for the next five to 10 years. This intertribal heritage site will be here for generations to come. What we're looking at is a sustainable idea where we're using the existing infrastructure, upgrading where we can, adding new outdoor spaces that don't require a lot. It may well be outdoor ramadas where we can have in the summertime shade created and storytelling going on or demonstrations going on and allow the various tribal groups who've decided they want to participate to have the spaces that they want and not be so structured into a, a square building. Our vision for this is really and truly to make this a living space and just not a building that will fall into disrepair. Because the park 
has been consulting. I think the management also has opened up this talk, this dialogue with the tribes, which has been really been beneficial to the tribes and the communities to say, hey, we want to come back into the park. The tribes were able to speak for themselves and voice some of the concerns that they had and things that they want to see. I support the project because it allows us an opportunity for my community specifically to go back into the park to maybe tell their stories firsthand from a tribal perspective and just work with the other tribes in telling our stories at Desert View. To fulfill the vision of this project will require significant investment in the grounds and structures at Desert View. With your generous support, we'll be able to transform the Desert View Intertribal Heritage Site into a place where visitors from around the world can interact with Grand Canyon's first people.